In this video, I'll be enumerating the core skills you need to make your very own bow sets, the switch skills to go for, and also bow combos to land those juicy, juicy numbers. I asked for your feedback and you guys did like the format I did in this video, so I'll do the same one for this. Give a person cheese, he or she has cheese for a day. Teach a person the path of cheese, he or she has cheese for the future. Before I enumerate the core skills we need in our bow set, so let's discuss a few points. Mighty bow is for all bow sets. The mighty bow feather, non-negotiable, it's needed in every bow set you make. Bows are no longer an elemental weapon. Does this mean we are gonna go for all raw bows? No. In Iceborne, elemental attack up on skills like ice attack, fire attack, water attack, etc. are usually prioritized. You max these skills up in every bow build, but in Rise, they are not priority. If you have a level 1 slot that's free, you slot maybe 1 or 2 in, but you do not necessarily make room for them. Why? Because the damage equation for bow kind of changed in Rise. I won't make it complicated no more you still carry an elemental bow, but increasing the element of that bow via decorations and skills isn't really priority no more. Constitution and Stamina Surge are essential. I recommend going for at least Constitution 4 and Stamina Surge 2, ideally Constitution 5. Bows really rely on proper stamina management. If you can't manage it, then you'll either cart or deal small PP damage. Constitution 4 and 5 along with Stamina Surge 2 seem pretty expensive to put in your builds, but there are good pieces that can make those possible, like Rock Nakadaki Greaves, Toby Kadachi Arms, and the new USJ chest. Try to look them up. To even further help with stamina management, you can eat for Dango Fighter, drink Dash Juice, and have a palico with go fight win. Shot type up, max it up. Rapid, pierce, and spread. Decide on which bow type you want and max that up in that build. That's 20% extra damage. Weakness exploit first, then critical boost. Weakness exploit gives you 50% affinity on a weak spot. Self explanatory. Try to fit three levels of this in your build first before even trying to fit in critical boost. Quick load two for instant code swapping. It's just really, really handy. I got this question a lot too in one of the bow runs. Close range coding gives more damage to the melee attack of dodgeball, more than the power coding. So, the core skills. Constitution 4 plus Stamina Surge 2, again, you can make this Constitution 5. Bow Charge Plus, which is coming from the Mighty Bow Feather. Shot Type Level 3, it can be spread, pierce, or normal. Weakness Exploit 3. Now here are the additional damage skills by Hierarchy. You see if you can fit in more critical boosts. If you can't fit in critical boost, try to check if you can put attack, agitator, or peak. And if you can't put those things in, maybe you have a leftover level 1 deco slot, try to put elemental attack up. For comfort, you go for flinch tree 1, of course, uh, this is really mandatory in multiplayer lobbies. Evade extender 1 makes dodge bolt feel really nice. Quick load 2 is, uh, you know, just for the handiness of code swapping. That's it. If you keep those things in mind when you are playing around with a builder to get the most out of your talismans, you'll end up with a great bow set. And just to act as a guide for which bows to craft, I'll enumerate the ones that I find good. For rapid type bows, your main go-to are the rampage bows. You can make one for thunder, fire, ice, water, dragon. Keep note of the rampage skills. For pierce bows, you go for rock nakadaki for fire, kushala for ice, rampage bows for thunder, dragon, and water. Now for spread bows, you have dragon for Valstrax. For a non-elemental spread bow, you go for Camellios. And then if you want a spread water bow, you go for the USJ bow. What is better, rapid or spread? Spread bows are kind of meta now, but the thing is they are a bit uncomfy because you have to be really near the monster to get the most damage out of them. Because if you are too far, your arrows will just spread too much. If you're new to bow, I recommend going for rapid first. And oh, in set building, try not to include any Valstrax piece. If you're going with an elemental bow except for dragon if you have dragon blight your element will be crap and same for status except of course if you are dealing dragon damage key things to note when playing bow notice the difference from a good crosshair and a bad crosshair the good one is the one with more detail and lit up this means you're in critical distance this changes with normal pierce and spread so be aware of it there are two bread and butter combos with bows the one two and the one two three the one two is dodgeball rapid power with an animation cancel you usually use this combo to deal some big pp damage in a short amount of time it needs some getting used to with the animation cancelling. If your timing is wrong, you'll probably do a power shot after the dodgeball and not get two shots in. Practice, practice. 
Dodgeball Rapid Power. Dodgeball Rapid Power. The 1, 2, 3 is Dodgeball Rapid Power Power. There's a huge delay on the second power shot. Observe the stamina gauge here. It actually has a moment to recover. This is a combo that is used depending on the situation. Maybe there's a moment that the monster is down and you don't want to lose your charge. So you try and get some stamina back while still maintaining the charge of your shots and also dealing damage at the same time. You can increase the charge of your bow by holding it or by just doing normal rapids at the start. You can fire a maximum of 4 consecutive rapids but you can interrupt it with a power shot or dodgeball at any time. Let's apply the things I've mentioned. Let's imagine the training dummy is a monster and we would want to deal the most amount of damage possible. I go for normal rapids to build up my bow charge, dodgeball to retain the charge, and go for the 1-2 combo. As soon as I see my stamina reaching a certain threshold, I resort to the 1-2-3 combo. It's less DPS because the rotation takes a long time, but the thing is, at least I don't lose my charges and I am still firing. It beats resetting your bow charge. You see the point here? Also, starting a combo with a perfect dodge bolt bumps up your bow charge level 2. So try considering starting some damage combos with the wonderfully executed dodge bolt for style and damage. If you don't have any more stamina remaining, you can either go for an aerial aim which costs 1 wire bug or go for Herculean draw which costs 2 wire bugs. Aerial aim consumes your bow charges and Herculean draw is actually a buff for more damage. It stays for a while. The switch skills I go for are dodge bolt, power shot, and also aerial aim. Power shot versus absolute. Unless I want to go for KOs, I choose power shot. Absolute gives your power shot KO damage. You get the KOs, but the stamina management would be not that easy. In some matchups, it is good though. Hopefully this video helped you guys about bows and has made you more confident in making bow builds yourself. I'll be showing my current bow sets on PC with my legit charm.